geothermal unit flashing a code, not cooling. Today we're going to learn a little bit about geothermal equipment. Hope you're ready to learn. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. Let's get started. This is a six ton York geo unit and it's got a few different zones. You can see the zone dampers there. This is the return. This is the supply duct. Got the bottom panel off. Customer said it was flashing a code. Three. Flash code three is low pressure lockout. Okay, so I got my gauges hooked up. Let me show you how that works. You can see the low side gauge is on the suction line and then high side gauge or high side hose is on the discharge line. Let's read the pressure. The low side is about 107 in between 105 and 110. High side is about 250. This is 410A. And this is not a closed loop. This is an open loop. They're using a well and it's a dedicated well. You don't want to use the same well that you use for your water to run your geo unit. This is an open loop pump and dump and it works off a well. You can see the expansion tank there. And then there's a well pump. There's the pressure switch. And then there's a 24 volt valve here, taco. 24 volt va valve, you can see it's open because the arrow is pointing that way. When it's closed, it'll be this way. We got one inch PVC and we're not flashing a code right now. I took the panel off on the left so you can see the tube in tube uh, coaxial. This is a two stage compressor. You can see the other solenoid. There is a TXV, but that is the coaxial. Now, I need to measure superheat and subcooling and see where we're at. Also, I can take this panel off here, make sure the fan's moving, see if the coil's filled up. Oh, it looks like we don't have as much sweat or condensation. Oh, that's a little frost as we do down here, see, the condensation, no condensation, condensation. So, check the pan, put your finger in there, see if you can feel any oil. Here is the Honeywell zone panel. Cool, stage one. Zone number one is off, zone number two is on. You can see how it's wired. Equipment wiring goes in there. We got a transformer to power this thing. There's where the thermostat's wired in. There's where the other thermostat's wired in. We got two different thermostats, two different zones. Hmm. Let's see, discharge air temperature, 48 degrees. Equipment just kicked off. You can see zone valve is now closed. That right there is the return line, and then you've got a supply line. So, supply line and return line. Pull from the well and then dump out in the backyard. Here's a duct that leads from the supply back into the return, and that's a barometric bypass damper. Not all zoning systems require that, but this system does. Whenever it closes uh, one of these zones, it will open up that barometric bypass. Well, the static pressure, it's set for a certain amount. Of static from 0.2 to 0.8 that helps to relieve some of that air that way you have good pressure still equipment should kick on here in a minute system is about to kick on you can see what's happening to the damper there it is closing and that must be zone two zone one is staying open so Zone two is almost closed. You can see that there. And there goes the water. Zone valve just opened. It's about to kick back on. I've got my clamp on the liquid line. And I'm gonna check the subcooling. See how much liquid we have. Measure the charge accurately. See that? That's where my little 
clamp meter is. My little thermocouple there. All right, now we wait. Here's where the water dumps out. See that there? There's where the water dumps out, probably two or 300 feet from the house. Pump and dump. 59 degrees for the liquid line temperature. That seems a little low to me. 59. Now that's really low. So I need to make sure it's in second stage. It may just be in first stage. And I always need to check the charge when it's in second stage because these pressures will dramatically change when that compressor is pumping at full capacity. So I'm gonna get my meter, check and see if it's on single stage. If it is, I'm gonna go to the thermostats and then I'm gonna adjust them so that they go down a little bit more in temp. Got our meter on volts AC. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna check from the C terminal to the Y1 terminal, okay? Zero, okay. C to Y2, 27 volts. Back to C and Y1, zero. Okay, so it's in second stage. All right. Low side is 107, high side is about 240. That just seems really low. I'm gonna try to add some refrigerant. Scales ready. Zero it out. And let's add. Let's add a pound. See what happens. There it is. So that should be a pound there pound. Head pressure's up. Suction pressure's down a little bit. Oh, condensate pump's working. Liquid line temperature's the same. Let me check the call to the zones. Well, I can just look. I'm calling for zone number two. Okay, so only one of the dampers should be open. This one's open. That one's closed. Okay, so that's right. Hmm. I'm going to add a little more. I'm going to add another pound and see what happens. I'm going to check and see how much refrigerant this unit holds. There's two pounds. See this? 72. YLFT 072, 72,000 BTU, so six tons. And then it holds 88 ounces of 410A, so that's about five and a half pounds. Interesting, so divide 88 by 16 and you'll get the pounds. Liquid line temperature is still 59. We've added two pounds. Low side is 110 now, high side is about 310. So suction is 110, head pressure is about 325. Unsure right now if we've got a leak, if we've got a TXV problem. Still need to do some checking around and see. Looks like both zones are calling now, open and open. Low side is 110, almost 115. High side is 325. Now I'm going to measure the voltage just so that you can see how I do this. All right, zone damper number one, we will check from M4 to M1, okay? Because that's common to open. All right, we should have 26 volts, all right, zero. Now zone damper number two, we're gonna check from M4 to M1, like that right there, because that's common to open. 26 volts, all right. And then if it was closed, you would check from M1 to M, I'm sorry, yeah, M1 to M6. 
Okay, so both dampers are powered open, 24 volts. Discharge air temp sense, 49 degrees, so 49 degrees out of the supply temp. I'm gonna double check, make sure the supplier temperature is 49 degrees. like it is 49 degrees okay so the customer said they had a code 3 flash code 3 which means low pressure lockout let's talk about what can cause a low pressure lockout in the cooling mode could be airflow could be low on refrigerant could be a restriction I don't think we have a restriction I think we have a leak somewhere I'm about to get my leak detector and then I'm gonna visually try to search for this leak I don't think it's airflow. We saw the dampers are opening. I checked the filters, they're clean. We saw the fan was blowing. If I can't find the leak with the leak detector or visually, the next step is going to be recovering the refrigerant and we're gonna be pressurizing with nitrogen and using soap and trying to find that leak that way. Checking this coil first. I've had some coils leak in the past. Although this unit's fairly new. Well, on this side of the coil, just checking everything out. Couldn't find any leaks so far. Maybe a slow leak it may take some time for me to be able to find this one. I may have to do a second visit, but hopefully not. Now I'm going to check pressure drop across the coaxial because this is an open loop and we're pulling in well water and I don't see a filter. I'm going to make sure there's not a significant pressure drop across the coaxial. Normally there's PT ports, but there are no pressure temperature ports on the inlet and outlet pipe there for the water. Normally I would use this gauge right here and this needle for the PT ports, or I would use this one. You see, they have the same type of uh, connection. This is a loop gooser tool, a way for me to easily add water if a loop is dry. But I'm going to be using this one because of course you can see this is what's going to work. And we've got two places to hook it up for the inlet and outlet so I can check the pressure drop. Equipment's on, zone valve is open, and we've got our gauge hooked up. What we got? About 30, it looks like 35, right at 35. So remember that, now we're gonna hook this one up. Pretty easy. So glad that we installed these. All right, now this one is about 40. So only a five PSIG change. So that's nothing. That means the coaxial's not stopped up. And that's good news. I got this at my local electrical plumbing supply house. I ordered this online, although you could probably make one of these uh, from the fittings that you could get at your plumbing supply house. But this is called a loop gooser. And I've got a geothermal training guide if you want it. All you have to do is be a level one member and let me know in the comments that you joined and I will send you a geo guide to help train you. Bob and Dustin did this job. Man, they did such a good job. The ductwork looks amazing. Looks like I'll be coming back at a later date with some nitrogen to pressure test the system and find out where it's leaking because I think that is the problem. Typical leaking areas for geo units, I've had to replace coaxials, I've had to replace indoor coils, I've had to replace the domestic hot water loop on these geo units if you want to see any of that i'll put a few videos down below so that you can learn more if you're a level three member you get access to all my members only videos so i have a few geothermal training videos that you can watch to learn more like how to use a socket fusion tool a heat fusion tool to weld uh, polyethylene pipe or polybutylene uh, which is high density polyethylene pipe hdpe i've got a video on how to use a flush cart so if you ever needed to uh, flush the system to add water to get the air out of the loop, then I've got a video on that. I've also got a geothermal training guide 
I can send that to you. Just become a level one member. Let me know in the comments that you joined and then I will send you all of my guides through email, including that geothermal training guide. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Let me know in the comments if you did learn something, what it was that you learned. If you don't have a question, let me know who you are and where you're from. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.